Do you want to see all the details of how to sew a button placket, a mandarin collar, and a special feature on the front of a top, plus a special collaboration? Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, this is Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. Welcome back again. If you notice any image quality difference, this is the brand new camera. I am playing around with it. I am still learning what to do. And actually, the person I'm collaborating today with has been a great help in the photography department. If you're enjoying this channel and you're learning things that are helpful for your sewing, please consider subscribing. Tap on that bell so you never miss when I upload a new video, share and like. Of course, you can always comment, I reply to every single comment. I'm just going to let you know who the collaboration is with and I've been announcing it before. This is Kim, she has a sewing channel called Dorothy's Daughter on YouTube. She started a few months ago and her channel is amazing, so many, so many practical things there. She does a Friday sewing school and then another video during the week about fit and so many, so many useful things. So if you haven't checked out Kim's channel, go over there after you watch my video and see what she's done as well. We've actually been in communication for months. We've become friends. Lovely, lovely lady. And she used to be a pro photographer. <laughs> so she's been letting me know all these little bits and bobs about the camera, what to try. And it's all been experimentation. Let's say my strength is sewing, not photography. <laughs> a few months ago, my brother was in the States. He stayed there for two months while he's doing a PhD. And I sort of mentioned that to Kim and she said, oh, I want to send you something. Where, what is his address? I can send him an envelope so that he can bring it to Chile and then my parents can bring it to me. That's usually how it goes. And just out of the top of my head, I remembered this pattern from Mimi G and it's Simplicity 8959. I'm gonna insert images of this pattern here because I don't know what's focusing, but I love the vest and um, yeah, I just love sleeveless things. And usually I need to adapt most jackets to sleeveless. And when I saw this release that it was actually meant to be sleeveless and it's got a lapel and everything, I love it. I also love the skirt, I love both you know, options in this pattern. So thank you so very much, Kim. The other thing that she sent me was that uh, it was a surprise. She found this uh, amazing border print and it's got green and turquoise and yeah, I think there's about three yards here of chiffon. So, oh, uh, just amazing. I'm thinking like a really flowy dress. I can see that being a hem of some sort, that border at the bottom. <laughs> so thank you so much. With Kim, we decided to sew the Presto tunic from Love Notions. It's a pattern I've had my eyes on and in my plans for a long time, maybe since March, I had already printed the PDF pattern. Things kept coming in between this project and when I mentioned to Kim that this was something I was planning, she also liked the pattern, so we decided to do it together. The Presto tunic, as all of Love Notions patterns, has so many options. I'm gonna put some pictures here so you can see. It's a tunic length. The special features about it is that in the front, center front, there is a panel that has some corners. In the middle of that, there is a button placket that is totally functional. There are two collar options, a mandarin collar and an easy option that is just to finish the neckline with bias binding. Guess which one I chose? <laughs> I love mandarin collars. Then for the sleeves, there's always different options, sleeveless, long, short, three quarters, all the sleeves you want, you'll find them in the pattern. There is a difference between the height of the front and the back, a three inch difference, and there is a split hem, and I think that's really cool. For shaping, there are side bust darts here. And at the back, there's also back fisheye darts that are optional. Guess what I want to do? Of course I want them, you know. <laughs> the fabrics recommended for these are wovens, sort of more structured, light to medium weight wovens. Linen, chambray, rayon. I don't know about rayon, maybe the more thicker rayon twill maybe. I think to do this sort of detail the thing has, I think it would you would struggle with rayon. If you want a more winter version, you can use flannel and then there's also shirting, cotton lawn, poplin. I think these types of fabrics make the construction of all the details here easier. Now, I didn't choose a fabric that is in the recommended list as usual. I just chose a fabric I liked. I chose a digital print crepe. Um, 
on the wrong side it's white and then on the right side it's got all the print and I didn't really think about it I just chose it and cut it out and then while I was constructing the garment I found I had a little bit of an issue with that but all fixable all fixable the sizing for this pattern comes in extra small to triple extra large there are two bust options, the standard bust and the full bust option. If the difference between the high and the full bust is more than four inches, you probably get a better fit and won't need to do a full bust adjustment if your cup is D and above. It's a good place to start. I saw the standard bust for Love Notions because that fits a difference between one and three inches. I have a C cup, which is a three inch difference in sewing. I also wear a C cup in you know, shop brass, but that is not always the case. It is for me though. So I don't really need to use the full bust option, but I think it's genius that it's there because so many people have to struggle with uh, full bust adjustments. Body measurements go from bust of 33 to 49 and a half, and hips 35 and a half to 51 and a half. Now the ease at the bust goes anywhere from three to six inches, depends on the size and what bust you're using, the standard or the full bust option. For the hips, the ease is around three and a half to four inches. So the intended fit of this is to be sort of semi-fitted around the bust and then loose at the waist and hips. The optional darts at the back will give you a little bit of shaping, but the intended fit is to be nice and loose and comfy. It is a tunic after all. What did I choose? I chose the sleeveless, no surprise there. And actually, I don't want a tunic. I used to wear lots of tunics when I had real winters. I would wear leggings under them, but for, for this really hot weather, tunics are basically unwearable because it would just be a really short, short mini skirt I would wear with my bare legs because I couldn't stand to wear like skinny jeans or whatever you wear with tunics. Usually it's something close fitting on the bottom. And so, yeah, I don't make tunics anymore. I make either longish tops that will reach my hip or full hip or high hip, or I will make a dress. So yeah, I've decided to do that. But you are going to see a lot of sewing. <laughs> this is all back. I've spent some time sewing and filming and editing for you. And I had a lot of fun editing. So all the things that you might find are a bit tricky, you will see that done in Up Close and Sew Personal. This is an intermediate pattern, but if you watch this and you follow along, you can surely do it yourself too. Don't you think this is start to wear? What you'll see in Up Close and Sew Personal is length and fitting modifications I've done prior to cutting the fabric, some fabric layout tips in one length and all the sewing of the button placket, the front middle panel with all those tricky little corners and lots of tips on constructing the mandarin collar. Don't you think this, is start to wear? this is the back, this is the front. I have made the same adaptation to lengthen the bodice or the body of the dress. One and a half inches is the difference I usually add. I have a three inch height difference to the drafted height of these patterns, which is five foot five and I'm five foot eight. And because I've sewn many, I know I need to lengthen in this area. Sometimes depends on the style, I lengthen a little bit there and I lengthen on the hem. But in this case, I measured from the top there, discounted the three eight seam allowance down. And this line here is actually my waist. There's a lengthen and shorten line there. I just lashed and added what I needed. And now this is my waist. Now there are back darts for sh uh, shaping because I've messed around with this. I have totally like misplaced where they're going to be. So I'm going to ignore the original darts, try on the dress and then shape them onto my body like I usually do. But on my pattern piece I have marked my waistline with a little line friction pen so that I have a reference of where to take it in and to just confirm that that's correct. This is the same I've done for the front. Lengthen and shorten line right there added. That is actually my waist. This is the middle that goes on the fold. This is where the inset goes. It's another separate pattern piece. I haven't modified that at all. The side bust that I usually drop it down by an inch. There's no difference there. I have marked my apex point. That is apex point of the pattern. So pretty common uh, adaptation I do to most patterns and I've done just cut it out, filled that in and brought it down to match my apex right there. Now this is a tunic, the front is drafted to be shorter than the back, there is side slits, that's why you can see that piece right there. 
I'm just folding this in. I'm not going to use that now because I want to make a dress. So I've lengthened the back by 8 inches so that it hits above my knee. And because the front was originally shorter, I've had to lengthen it by 11 because there's a 3 inch difference between the front and the back if you make the tunic version. I want to make a dress. I think I'll get much more wear out of a dress. Tunics really, uh, I can't wear them anymore. That is so hot. Like I can't pull it off really with bare legs. It would be just a, like a really short shorts <laughs> dress. So I'm just folding this away. I'm not cutting it away because I might eventually make a tunic but just shorter. So that's just like a, like a top but not that long. Anyway, I'm just folding that away for now. This is the panel that goes into the middle. There is a little corner there that you have to be careful to sew. There are little marks there to show you where to stop sewing. And this is what gives the piece uh, the, the special feature. This is where the placket's gonna go and that's where the collar's gonna go. And you cut two of those, but this front up to there is cut on the fold. Don't you think this is starting to this is the layout for my Presto dress. You can see the areas where I've lengthened there. I've already shown you the adjustments I've made. Because both back and front are on the fold, I have folded the selvages into the middle. Now this is 58 inch wide fabric, so I have enough space to fit my hips there. This is a size large. I think up to an extra large you could fit or uh, using this layout that would save fabric and just require one full length for the two pattern pieces. This middle inset, I'm gonna get from the bottom there that's dangling off the table. But the button placket and the collar pieces, I'm gonna get from this contrast fabric. It's a crepe that is a little bit darker than the background color of the fabric, but I think I can get away with it. I have all these little pieces to cut out of this contrast fabric. I have the placket, the back collar that goes on the fold, and the front that is two separate pieces. Now the pattern comes with separate interfacing pieces for you to cut and fuse onto that. There are these separate pieces that are slightly smaller than the main. But actually I prefer to just fuse the whole thing. This is not a thick bulky fabric at all. To have these really really accurately cut, what I have done is got my contrast fabric, sort of figured out the piece I needed, like the amount, and I just fused the whole thing. So I've got the interfacing already on there. And when I cut these really accurately, um, they're already fused, everything's gonna be really good. They're not gonna distort in shape or anything, especially as I'm working with crepe. I think stabilizing it first and fusing the interfacing on will keep these pieces more intact. Don't you think this is starting to wear? These are the placket pieces. This is the right sides up. The wrong side is interfaced. On the part that's taller, I've done a guiding stitch at a quarter of an inch there. I will repeat that onto the other side. So I need to press this towards the wrong side at a quarter of an inch and I think doing a guiding stitch always makes that easier. I've pressed this in at a quarter of an inch and now this little guiding stitch is really easy to remove. I did it at 4.5 stitch length. So all you do is grab a little bit there And then you have the back one there to take out. I've placed these little placket pieces. Now this looks really wrong, but it's correct. Right to wrong. So that goes there on both sides. And now I have to sew that with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm using my quarter inch foot with the needle towards the left to go through that little hole on the presser foot. It gives me a really, really precise 3 eighths seam allowance. This is starting to wear me. You've been reading. So I've got that sewn on and now what happens to this placket is that it gets folded towards the right side like that. And my issue is that I'm working with a crepe that is a digital print. So the wrong side of the fabric is white and this is where it's been printed. So when I fold this, there is the risk of this showing. So I'm going to do an extra step and I'm going to understitch. I'm going to pull all the side seams towards the left this way. Of course I didn't think about this before cutting the project. <laughs>
So I've got that under stitch there and then when I press this, this will ensure that that white area of the crepe is going to stay inside. Now I'm going to press this really nicely and then probably do some hand basting to put that in place really neatly and then I'm going to top stitch that placket down. I've got the placket pressed and flipped over towards the right side. Some old fashioned hand basting has secured that there and now I can just go ahead and top stitch very narrow there on the edge. I'll use the edge foot for that. And those little white dots you can see there are the marks I've made for the buttonholes. So I'm putting four buttons and then I can assemble this, cross it, actually sew on the buttons if I want or I could leave it towards the end <laughs> and do a basting stitch there to hold this together. When I use the edge foot for sewing, you can see how very neat and very straight the sewing is, is there. So really, you can't go wrong with an edge foot. It's made a huge difference since I've started using it. and Everything looks so precise now. You can see how I've hand basted sort of away from where I wanted to stitch so that I didn't catch these basting stitches. And now it's just as easy as pulling it out. This is the front piece already finished buttonholes are done. I've just basted that close so it's not flapping around. I have done a stitch there to hold that together and on the wrong side there is a dot there and a dot on the other side and that is what I need to match to the front piece that goes there. Don't you think this, is starting to wear? this is the wrong side of the front. There are the bust that's already sewn up in this little square bit there it's instructed to fuse a piece of interfacing and do a stay stitch within the 3 8 seam allowance. So it's like a millimeter smaller than the 3 8 seam allowance. And that red dot there are the reference points that are marked on the pattern that are gonna match these points there. Now I'm showing you up closer this part there where it's been stay stitched. There's the dot and here I've done a little clip diagonally. This is gonna help this open up to match that right there. I have pinned the middle area to this. Now I'm very carefully, you saw that I clipped to that point. I've got a pin right on that point there and another one on the point there. So what I prefer to do is start at the point, use this on the sewing machine that is just goes up and down a few times and it secures the stitch and then keep going up. Then start again there and go up and then I'm going to do this separately I think when you do this and you pivot sometimes there's errors and pockets and things I think I can control it better if it's a whole different stitch like I can control that start right on the point as you can see I've wiggled all the fabric away to the other side and you can see the red dot there so I'm going to place my needle in there and then press that little button that just sews on the spot So then it stops and then I can just keep sewing at the 3 8 seam allowance here. You can see one point there has threads hanging from where I stopped and on the other side here as well. So now I've got this middle area to sew really carefully so I'm going to really try to not get any puckers and push everything away to start right there at the point. This is the middle there completed. I've just pressed it. You can see, you are, you can barely see because of the print. There is a seam, there is that little corner, there is the other corner right there. I've got like a millimeter of a pucker there. I'm going to try to press that out <laughs> and then that goes up to there. This is way easier to do on cotton or more stable fabrics. This is quite thin and slippery and stuff, but I'm quite happy. I'm, I'm very satisfied with how that looks. 
I'm working on the collar right here. There is the little placket. And now this part of the collar was the one that I cut when I fused the interfacing to the fabric directly. So that is my fused area that I've left at the front because that's going to be the visible area. I think the, the collar piece that's been fused is always more smooth and it just looks nicer. So that is the one that I've pinned onto the top. You can see the interfacing right there and how many thousand pins I have used to pin this collar piece to the top. Now the inner collar is the one that I cut without fusing that I just cut normally out of normal the same fabric and that's the one that's going to go inside like that. Now I'm super impressed with this collar piece. This is a mandarin collar. It, everything matched like all the notches the collar there matches the shoulder seam perfectly like there's not even a millimeter off with this collar and that's really good so I'm just gonna go and sew this on really carefully all the way around now I have the top bit basted on there just hand basted to keep it in place crepe is really hard to press sometimes so I would made sure to hand baste it first and then I pressed it. All this inside, because it's all curves, has been clipped so that everything can turn nicely. This little piece there, the curve of the mandarin collar inside has been trimmed like a, like a, like that, like I've taken chunks off to reduce the bulk. So just basic collar construction. This is a fun process for me. I take it slow because I really want it to look really nice. This mandarin collar is ready to be top stitched now. I've done the inner collar, I folded it in and hand basted that down. That top bit has been basted down to keep its shape and because this is a mandarin collar and this is the visible area, I want the top stitching done on this top bit there. I'm not going to top like put the machine through there. I'm going to put it like that. So that is what I want really neat because it's going to be the visible area and I'm going to use my edge foot to go all the way around the corner. Here is my completed dress. As you saw, I did the under stitching right there. There's the overlapping placket. I chose light colored buttons to contrast. I wanted the placket and the mandarin collar to be a feature. Um, they're quite biggish buttons. This is a functional placket. You know, you saw me make that and there is that seam. I made by binding from the same fabric I use as contrast to finish my sleeveless armholes. Now I have to mention, um, full of notions when they have a sleeveless option, I never do the sleeveless option as such because there's a different arm side you can cut. I just cut the same arm side that will be used to attach a sleeve because I think for me, for what I want, it gives me more coverage around there. Sometimes some sleeveless garments are drafted to be a little bit more scooped here. But it's all personal preference, you know, it's all personal preference <laughs> and that's the beauty of sewing, choosing what you like. I'm not really a sash person, but if there is an option in the pattern, there's a chart that tells you what measurements to cut. You have to draft that yourself on a piece of paper. I actually just cut it straight onto the fabric. I should have interfaced it because it is a little bit floppy. I made this belt loop from the same fabric here. I told you when I was showing you fitting adjustments that I'd sort of lost the back darts that were on the pattern because of all the modifications I did to the length. I just fitted it on myself, put it on, pinned where I had to do it and that's it like I usually do. I have just surged and folded up and hand hemmed. Here you can see me in my garden with my new camera experimenting in my dress with my sash. I think the amount of ease in this pattern is perfect for comfort and for looks. The darts at the back plus the sash give it really nice shaping. Up close you can see my floppy sash that needed to be interfaced a little bit. There is that little loop I made for the sash and up close you can see all that little bit of ease around the waist, super comfy and super nice. I, th I think this pattern is amazing. Up close, up the top, you can see that center panel that I showed you how to sew with the placket there is the bust that I dropped it one inch and it's perfect. 
I'm super happy with this. The mandarin collar is always a really nice feature, super elegant, super clean. It fit beautifully into the pattern. Just beautiful pattern, really. I really love it. You can see the arm side coverage I was mentioning before, and I am happy. Now Kim, of course, has done a totally different Presto tunic, different fabric, different view, and what she's focused on on her channel is working with really, really difficult fabric. So she basically told me in tearing and fraying, and that is what she was focusing on, on giving tips on how to work with that type of fabric. Go and check out Kim's channel as soon as you finish watching this. I will link her video in the end cards, I will link it in the description box. Please go and show her some love, she's a dear friend of mine, we've had a lot of fun working together. So go and see her version and I'm sure you'll pick up lots of tips and tricks over there as well. Consider spending more time on the channel watching hundreds of videos of limitless sewing. There's no limits to your sewing and I show you that in every single video. Thank you so much, see you soon, bye!